Russia threatens nuclear war on, on Ukraine. Hell I'm yeah. just so tired of these countries pump faking nuclear That's war. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> like, You're somebody not, do it already. Right. Somebody, I want to <laughs> see what that shit is. Yeah. <laughs> I try to see what that shit's about. Come on. I try to see some shit disintegrate. <laughs> Ain't this what y'all said it do? Stop pump faking it. Shoot some bitch ass nigga. <laughs> I couldn't be president. A nuclear weapon? <laughs> nigga, you better. Hey, if it's up, it's stuck, nigga. Russia threatens nuclear war on, on Ukraine. Hell I'm yeah. just so tired of these countries pump faking nuclear war. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> like, You're somebody not, do it already. Right. Somebody, I want to see what that shit yeah. <laughs> I try to see what that shit's about. Come on. I try to see some shit disintegrate. <laughs> Ain't this what y'all said it do? Stop pump faking it. Shoot some bitch ass nigga. <laughs> I couldn't be president. A nuclear weapon? <laughs> nigga, you better, hey, if it's up, it's stuck, nigga. Russia threatens nuclear war on, on Ukraine. Hell I'm yeah. just so tired of these countries pump faking nuclear war. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> like, You're somebody not, do it already. Right. Somebody, I want to see what that shit yeah. <laughs> I try to see what that shit's about. Come on. I try to see some shit disintegrate. <laughs> Ain't this what y'all said it do? Stop pump faking it. Shoot some bitch ass nigga. <laughs> I couldn't be president. A nuclear weapon? <laughs> nigga, you better, hey, if it's up, it's stuck, nigga. All right, Shalom. All praise to the Most High Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekai, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutation to you, brother. Hopefully, like push this word of truth and sincerity. All right, uh, <clears throat> this video here is Stop Pump Faking on Nuclear Destruction. All right. So, you saw in the little opening uh, clips, you got these two Jakes that's making just out of nuclear destruction. You know, they're saying, Stop Pump Faking. I would, you know, I want to see what I want to see what them things gonna do. You know, you say they this they you know you say they disintegrate things. I want to see something disintegrate, like this man was saying. All right, but the thing is, they don't really want to see that because they have absolutely no clue what what that that fervent heat will actually feel like. But the Lord, He He will get you acclimated to. It. He'll let He'll let you know firsthand what it means. All right. But you see, they laughing about it, making jest about making jest of it, and have absolutely no clue what's going on. <laughs> and and frankly, you see, you can tell they they on some type of podcast or or whatever, because you know that's that's a, a major thing that everyone has a podcast. So you know they making some type of money here. They you, you can tell they they love it here. They they don't want to leave here, but they talking about uh, nuclear destruction, you know, dealing with the nukes. Alright. <clears throat> but curious. Look up this term pump fake. Alright, this is gonna be from the Urban Dictionary term pump fake to throw for a loop to deceive or to fool I went to Brenda's house thinking that I was gonna smack the skins but she <laughs> but she pump fake me <laughs> oh man just, just it was funny how they use that in a sentence <laughs> <laughs> pump faking. He says, pump faking is when you pretend to have a weapon, normally a gun, around your waistband, sticking your hand on your waist, pretending to hold the grip of the weapon, normally used to threaten others around them or using it to scare someone that doesn't know if they've got a gun or not. So they're using the term pump faking. Okay, here's, here's another one. A pump faker. A pump faker is a person who states intentions to do something and never follows through. A person who is notorious for making plans but never following through. So they're saying that they're telling me, they're saying um, they want the, these nations with nuclear capabilities to stop, to stop um, stating their intentions and just simply follow through. Okay, 
But like I said, they don't really want that. But that's <laughs> they'll find out. So this is a uh, Amos chapter five verse eighteen. It says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Okay. Or went into the house and leaned his hand upon the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark with no brightness in it. Okay. So. And we know that that day of the Lord, when those missiles, when those uh, missiles are shot off and and that lake of fire is made, that's going to be a hell of a day. And it says, woe unto you that desire the day to what end is it for you? Because, you know, you, if these people don't know, these people don't know what's to come. How dreadful the day is, that day really will be because the Lord... Yahweh Shai, he's coming back to deliver and to destroy. Okay? He's coming back to deliver his elect and to destroy the rest. Then it says, as if a man did flee from a lion or a bear met him or went into the house. So, think about you running from a lion and <laughs> and then you, you kind of get away from a lion or you get a little breather, you run into a bear. Like, Damn. And then it says, or went into the house and leaned his hand up on the wall and a serpent bit him. So, you know, you, you get a little breather, you get a little time away, you get a little rest, you find some type of security, some type of safety. And then, you know, that you are running from, you know, that, you know, that you are running from. A, uh, so you ran from the lion and then ran into a bear. You, you ran from the bear and went into a house. And now you're tired, you lean your hand on the wall, and then a serpent bites you. Okay? So, it's to say, you can't escape the judgment of the Lord. You know, whether, you know, uh, whether you're going to die by the sword, by the famine, by the missiles, by, you know, whatever. However the Lord going to take you out, you're gonna, you can't escape it. Okay? Because this is going to be a time like never before. Okay? The earth has never seen what the Lord has in store for it. The Lord, the Lord's gonna take it out in a big bang, okay? This, this is Daniel chapter twelve, verse one, and it says, "And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book." Okay, so now you it's, it's got to be a troublesome time if if the Lord Lily is gonna have Michael the Archangel stand up to fight also. You know what I'm saying? You got you gonna have the angels. You got to have the angels coming that coming with the Lord. Okay, it's gonna be a dark, or gonna be a dark day. It's gonna be a gloomy day. You know. All that's encompassing of, of what's to come, along with that lake of fire, along with those uh, those missiles. This is Joel chapter three, verse nine, and this is leading up to it. Okay, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles: prepare war, wake up the mighty men, that all the men of war draw near and let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Okay. So we're going to, instead of uh, take, take those instruments of cultivation and put them in, and put them into instruments of war. Okay. And then if you want to put it forth in these times, we're going to uh, take more of the funding from out of the, uh, you know, out of the budget or out of the, uh, the economic system for you know for for growing food and different things and put it into war because they remember there's big money there's big bucks in war there's a lot of money to be made off of war okay to let the weak say i am strong so even those small nations those small those weaker nations even they have nuclear capabilities now okay 
Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be weakened, Shalakia, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, okay, for the harvest is ripe. Come down, you, Shalakia, come get you down, for the press is full. The fats over, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. All right. And it's saying the, the flesh is full, meaning that, you know, uh, that, that time of the harvest is, is ripe, is ready. Okay, because the Lord is, he has a certain, uh, he has a certain time in which he set for everything to uh, to take place. And then once that time is fulfilled, then the Lord will move, move forward with it. So he has a set amount of wickedness that must play out within the earth, that must fill up to a certain amount before he uh, calls before he comes and destroys it, okay? Before he comes and, and cuts it down. All right, it says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. OK, so when he comes. The heavens and the earth is going to shake. The heavens and the earth are going to feel his presence. Matter of fact, all, all everything is going to tremble at his presence. This is uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 2. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it, mo that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. Okay? So all the inhabitants of the earth, or the earth and the heavens, he's going to shake it. His, the, Yahweh Shai's presence is going to be known. Ain't nobody going to be here and not know that Yahweh Shai is here. Okay? All things trembled that were under him. But he came with the thousands of heaven, those chariots and those angels. He coming with the army. He coming with the host. The Lord of Sabaoth. Okay? That's how the Lord has come. He coming in style. <laughs> And he and he coming with the with the masses. He coming with the multitude. All right, just to give even more uh, proof, this Psalm chapter sixty-eight, verse seventeen: The chariots of the Most High are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. The Lord is coming with the host of heaven. Okay. In 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 4. And whensoever the voice went out of his out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fell when it filled the fire. So that's what I'm saying. These guys, they don't wanna, they don't really want to feel this fire. Okay. They don't want to feel this fire. They think they do. They they saying it in just, but no, nah, that's that's not something they want. They, you know, they say we don't, they don't want that smoke. All right, they don't want that smoke of Yahweh Shai. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea, which was Yahweh Shai. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. All right, so he had that, that huge chariot. Sometimes we refer to it as that fathership. But I would have seen the region or place where, where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, but yet durst fight. So even though they were scared, the Lord put the spirit on them to, to fight him. 
And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flame of breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Okay? It's going to be the dead gonna be that fire from the missiles and on top of that you're gonna have the laser beam from the chariots okay and they were all mixed together the blast of fire the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burn them up every one so that upon a sudden and of innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived but dust and the smell of smoke when i saw this i was afraid now, Ezra says when he saw it, he was afraid. This guy says, "Oh, oh, I thought I thought those, those uh the missiles or the, the missiles they could disintegrate. I want to see some be disintegrated. Well, hey, you you might actually have to watch yourself be disintegrated. Okay. Ezra said he was afraid when he saw it. Okay, and he, they're they're just making light of it." I'm going to skip down to verse 29. Because along with that, you won't also have these countries fighting each other and before Yahusha come. And then they leave off and fighting each other to fight Yahusha. But it says, Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. All right? So all 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 at the same time, you're gonna have uh, race wars, class wars, riots, uh, insurrections, okay? Uh, different these nations fighting each other, countries fighting each other. Okay, then it says one realm against another. Why does it say that? Because Yahweh and the angels are coming from that realm, they're the realm where they're at, to this realm. So you're going to have the, a different realm. You're going to have the angels fighting the people. Okay? And the time shall come, Salaki, and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before, and when... And then shall my son be declared whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. Okay. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion. That's why I said they're going to stop fighting each other and turn to fight Yahweh when they see him. And Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and built it like as thou as, as the hill graven without hands. And this my son shall shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are falling into tempest. Now how's the how's the Lord gonna rebuke them? Is he is he gonna talk to them, tell them where they tell them where they sins at? No. He's not gonna talk to them or tell them where they're going off. He's just gonna burn them. All right, and they and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and their torments, wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto me. Okay, without labor, he's gonna destroy them through that fire. Okay. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 it says for, for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven okay you, 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 they want them nuclear missiles launched that's gonna burn as an oven and all the proud yea and all that do wickedly shall be stubble shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall burn, shall burn them up saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch all right, the Lord is gonna destroy. He's gonna burn, bro. You you don't, you're not looking for that day. That's gonna be 
the scariest day in history, okay? The most joyous for the elect and the most scariest at the same time. Well, I said they don't, they have absolutely no clue. I ended off here. This uh second Peter chapter three, verse ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. Okay, because that's how uh, loud that sound be when it when they when those missiles detonate. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Okay. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in our holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of, of Yahweh Shema Shai, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. It's going to be hot heat. Okay, the elements are going to melt. Okay, everything you see is made of elements, including yourself. Okay. You know, from the trees, the plants, the animals, the house you live in, the car you drive, whatever you do, and everything that you see is made up of elements. It's, Lord said he's going to melt the elements with fervent heat. All right. These guys don't know that. These guys don't understand the type of heat that the Lord is coming with, but they will. All right. They will. Okay. So this was a uh, stop. Uh, stop pump faking. Oh, nuclear destruction. All right. So, uh, call all y'all about Shimabashabashimakako. Dash will be edified. Shalom.